So the bond cloud opening is when you push the pawn here. Your opponent, let's just say your opponent pushes this pawn, or actually even this pawn, and they go king up. Um, what? Oh, sorry, that's Vietnam. Oh, you're right, that's Vietnam. That's not China. Sorry. Jeez, I'm blind, you guys. Sorry. That's Vietnam. You're right, that's not China. Oh my gosh, you're right. That's Vietnam. Oh, jeez. It's pretty early, you guys. I'm, I, yeah, what am I doing? It's, it's pretty early. Oh my gosh. Did I really just say that? That's totally going to end up getting clipped. Oh dear. Hello? Hi, how are you? Good. How about yourself? You're playing a game. So I'm not, I'm not going to actually disturb you too much, but uh, one, okay. I will give you your first lesson. So in this position, the first thing I would say is since you've developed your king, you've developed your pieces. Is there anything that you can capture for free? Uh, I don't know this pawn maybe. Oh, oh, I don't know if it's free. Well, do the calculation. Okay, bing. Oh, sorry, bang, boom. Ding, ding, di donk, whatever it is, yeah. Um, but yes, it, it is a free pawn. So this would be the first thing you should be looking for. You developed your king. You developed your bishops and your knights. So yeah. Um. So, so first thing you should do is see if there's anything that you can win in a trade. And if you capture the pawn, you are ahead. Right. Yeah. I, maybe I should have moved. Uh, maybe I should have started with the other knight. Um, I don't think it really made a difference. The other one was maybe slightly better, but it's it's pretty dank in terms of the reasoning behind why the other knight was very, very marginally better for capturing. But it's it's completely fine. So the first thing is now that you've developed is look to see if you can capture things um with with your pieces so like ca this exchange you made you got a knight and a pawn for one knight so now you're ahead by well you're actually yeah. up by two pawns now instead of one um so that's next, the first I, thing i really want to do this next move my uh rook to c uh eight mm -hmm. but uh, he's probably thinking hard now because he has to move his queen i guess so i probably ha will have to respond to whatever he's doing not gonna go here and he's not gonna go here not gonna he could go here how do you per how do you clear the you gotta click them again you mean to get rid of the arrows yeah yeah so so i i would say basically just you have to right click i think i broke him I was I was started practicing ten plus five, but then I kind of got went back a bit to ten plus zero mm -hmm. because I'm I keep being too slow. Um, and and so I want I wanted to play more ten plus zero to practice being faster. That that makes some sense. So okay, so now for another free pawn. Right. Well, you 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 you're, you clearly don't need my help. You uh, you're, you're saying everything. <laughs> This guy's angry now. Wait, so what was this opening you played? Did you play? Ah, uh, uh, yeah, you missed you messed with this opening. I, I actually I think like ten minutes ago I saw this opening and I was gonna I was gonna make a comment when when we jumped on the call, so I'll uh I'll I'll get back to it. But anyway, your queen's under attack here. Uh-huh. Uh I'll probably go here, I think. Uh or no, not here. Not here, not here. I could go here, hide behind this. Maybe that's a cheeky spot. I'm not really, I'm not thinking too hard right now because I don't have time for it. Right, so I think actually if you're playing games without without the increment where you don't get time on every move, then, then it is good to play more just on instinct because that helps you just move quicker and um, as sort of just, just try to see things in those split seconds. So I think in the tournament, a lot of, well, it's your move again, so I'll, I'll let you finish the game. I won't talk too much since you're okay. on the clock. Bing, bang, boom, bing, wham. Mm-hmm. 
free bishop wait how is take take oh yeah i would i would have still gone out ahead of the trades regardless maybe right well you could have captured the bishop for free on the last move um that would have been a the best best choice but what you did is not bad either in 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 terms of the basic understanding of what you're looking for in the position hmm I, I tunnel visioned this rook a bit that I really wanted to go for. Shite. See, so that guy is going to chase me with his rook. Right. But remember, you, you do have... Okay, I'll, I'll just let you finish the game since the time is so low. It's... It, I'll, I'll be it'll, it'll be distracting okay <sighs> fuck dude Blood Nicks tipped five dollars. Lamps in video games ah. are only electricity. No time, but he's also out of time, so I win. Yeah, you, you win. <laughs> I just I was looking for forcing trades. I was looking for checks and stuff to just yeah. Just yeah, I mean I I think if you're playing uh if you if you're playing these, one second. What, what your nim nim neon? Okay. Wait, can I just uh before we start, can I just go p roll fast? Yeah, 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 of course. We'll yeah, yeah, absolutely. I have a right back. Sure, no problem. All right, you guys. So we are going to be starting in um, in 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 a second. Uh, I think I think what I'm going to do is specifically. I sh I should have said no. I should have said no. Right. I should have said no. You can't go use the restroom. <laughs> uh, there's no way to fix the delay because the thing is, I'm in a Discord call with Nim and I'm watching his stream on the other monitor. So I just have his face. I have the cam from his stream, but on Discord, we're just doing a regular call. So. Um, so that that's why it's just not possible I, I know it sucks don't get me wrong like i wish there was a way to do it uh to do it all in sync but it's just there it's just not possible so uh share a screen on discord yeah but the problem is then you you can't like it, it gets tricky because like you can't share your webcam because your webcam is an obs so it's just it's it's not it's not as simple um it's it's just not as easy as it looks like as it sounds like i mean i guess if you're really technically advanced you could have like two webcams or something crazy but um but yeah it'd be very hard is this you invite? No, it's not, right? Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah, yeah, it's Is me. it you? Yeah, oh, it's okay. me. Okay, so let so first first off, um I, I, I was hearing from Forrest and the buys that like you're the guy who's uh, who's farming all, all the all the people for the lessons. Um so <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> So, no, no, I'm joking, of course. But like, so so what I was gonna say though is so you've been taking lessons with a lot of different um streamers, yeah. right? So I, I don't really want to sort of go out of my way and, and, and sort of guide you in a, in a direction that doesn't like sort of runs counter to what you've learned because then you're going to end up getting very confused. So I guess the first spot to start, and, and we'll start with Black since you played this game with Black, is what are the openings that you've been learning? Um, and you can make moves on this board as well. If 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 I'm up against C4, I or sorry E4, I do C5. That's what I've been doing, Sicilian. Okay, and so I'm so assuming it's... that uh, whether it was Niels or, or Alexander, that probably they they showed you like a night out. Um, actually, the openers I kind of 
I kind of just looked up a bunch of openers and kind of tried them, some of them out, and then I decided I liked those. Okay, okay. Um, so I just kind of, and they were like, yeah, that's fine. You can go with that. So they didn't specifically show me the answer, but... Okay, so in, in that case, I think, the, like, one of the most important things is that you get out of the first, the opening stage, the first, like, 10 moves of the game where you get to play chess and you're not significantly behind when you're when you're playing against uh when you're playing against like Forsen or or chocobars or slicker because i think those are the other three players who are in your group yeah. um so specifically if you're going to play the sicilian defense th like let's go back to move one so if you put the pawn on e5 mm -hmm. uh if you just think about it logically the reason behind putting the pawn here is you're trying to both players are trying to take space in the center of this board yeah and secondarily uh if white tries to push a pawn to, to get get more pawns in the center than you would capture let's say white captures and you're able to bring out your knight quickly with development where you attack the queen and then you bring out this horse um, before your opponent does uh-huh so so when you, when you push a pawn in the center like like for example this is another opening which i highly i do not recommend playing this is called the french defense uh mm -hmm. you end up giving white this very big center where white gets these two pawns um or even these pawns like this and white ends up with much more space if you if you look at the, just look at looking purely at the pawns you'll see that white's pawn is further advanced than black sure. pawn, right sure. so so the reason that the re thing that most people want to do in the opening stage is take take space in the center with their pawns so when you push this pawn in the center it's actually the same thing as pushing the other pawn in that if your opponent tries to take the center right away with this pawn push uh you definitely capture so if your opponent mm -hmm. does pushes a pawn here you always want to capture it and then if your white, okay. if your opponent takes in the same theme as what I just showed you, is there a good developing move? Um, maybe uh, the knight mm -hmm. to c six. Mm -hmm. Do I do it? I yeah. Know. So so this is actually why normally white doesn't do this because white has already violated one of the basic opening principles, which is when you start the game out, you don't want to move your queen very early. Because what happens is your queen can get attacked by many different black pieces, and then you have to waste time retreating your queen, and you've already given black an advantage because you got this knight out for free because you you gained one tempo on the queen. So white had to waste moves um, with the queen in, before continuing the development. Yeah. So so nor so and the other thing is also in this game now if you think about what happened after you push the pawn and white pushed the pawn this is very similar to what happened in the other well, let me um it was like if you look at this position and then you look at uh you look at this position it's kind of the same thing in that white has white has much more space again because the pawn is further up in the center yeah so when you put a pawn in the center, whether it's like this one or the, or the pawn in front of your king, the reason is to try and prevent white from ever getting two pawns, right. uh, the pawns in front of the king and the queen on these center squares. Yeah. So if white pushes a pawn, you capture. We'll, we'll, we'll go right. through a couple of variations. And I'll, I'll let you play as well. But I, I really think it's important to stress that you can kind of get to, get to just a normal position and play the game. Because otherwise, the tactics and sort of the strategy aren't really going to come into play if you don't understand, um, if, if if you don't like understand the basics for developing your pieces and and, and getting your king out of the center. Mm -hmm. So let's keep going with this. Now I will move my queen back, and so and so now there there are many there are many good moves here. Yeah. But but what is the what is one of the first things that you want to do in terms of developing? Um. Uh, like which, which, which piece either, do you want to bring either, out first? Yeah, I'm thinking maybe I want to bring the knight out or I want to bring a center pawn out. Right. So 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 bringing the knight out, generally you want to bring the knights out early um, before you bring the bishops out because the knights sort of attack attack the pawns and they also then help control the center squares. Like here you'll see your knights. Uh, they're they're going to guard both of these, these squares in front of your king and queen if you want to push your pawn to these squares. Mm -hmm. So if you bring the knight out, I'll bring my knight here. And now, remember you want to develop, so, uh -huh. right. Now this this move maybe is okay, but the problem is that white can capture. Right, oh, yeah. but you see, unfortunately now I'm gonna capture. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, oh, I take queen, but then, yeah, okay. Yep. And then I take, I take your queen. Right, so, <laughs> so, so you want to do that, but again, I, I guess the thing is when you're looking at development, 
generally try to think about your king and getting it out of the center of the board. This is very, very important. Yeah. Um, and so the way you want to do this is to push your pawn up here. Okay, either one or two steps. Well, you actually don't want to push it two steps because what this does here is you'll see that now you actually create this square on d5 for white to control. So white can move a bishop. And there, ah. first of all, there's a target towards your king. But secondly, you can ah. never push this pawn forward. And so what ends up happening is if you, this is actually probably okay, but you end up where your pawns are kind of not really helping each other. And this pawn blocks the bishop from coming out. Okay, interesting. Yeah. So... So, so, so that's why you actually want to push up one square because now if white brings the bishop out, there's just a there are a bunch of pawns. So the bishop doesn't attack uh, anything near your king. Mm -hmm. So, so let's say you push the pawn. I'll bring the knight out. What's your next move? Probably this. You can do this, but again, the the thing that's most important is getting your king out of the center of the board and finishing your development right. before you try to bring all the pieces. And normally, what I would say is also with your pieces that are next to your queen, like the, bringing the knight out early is completely traditional. But when you play the Sicilian, normally you you you, you want to get your king out of the center before you try to develop this bishop and the rook near near your queen. So, the, so the general oh, order yeah, I would okay. say of developing your pieces normally, especially um, if you have a bishop with pawns like this where your bishop uh -huh. can't come out early is you want to develop the other bishop and then get your king out of center. So is there, is there a move you can play with your bishop here to attack something? Yeah. So you can make the move on the board. Yeah, I just did. Oh. Why didn't I see it? I, I did it before as well, and I think you were just like rewinding, and then you, I don't know. Okay, try to, make, like... try to make another move then. I mean, let me just make a move for white. Do you see a move that I just made for white or not? Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. There's just some kind of weird delay there. Okay, okay, that's fine. Okay, so so yeah, so so what I was gonna say is that it, when you move the bishop here, if, if I were to move this bishop up, actually you have a really you have a really good move that's even better than bishop takes knight. Uh huh? I know what the move is. This. Mm -hmm. you see it? Yeah, I I think there's some kind of weird delay, but but yeah, knight knight takes e4 uh, is is the correct move because now I can't capture the knight because then my king would be in check. Mm -hmm. So so yeah, so so this is where you would want to put the bishop ideally, and if I bring the bishop here, what would your next move be? Because now I'm actually guarding the pawn. Right. Um. Normally, well, I end up with this bishop a lot on this. Knight, and usually mm -hmm. I just take to give right now. Now you, you can gets... do this, but what I would say in general is if, if you if you can't make trades or you can't uh, exchange bishops and knights where you're going to gain material advantage at the start, the the main thing that's most important is getting your king out of the center of the board. Okay. Okay. Right. Yep. Bam. Yeah, I, I think there's some delay, so I'm going to have to actually have your stream okay, open on the other monitor. Yeah, that, that's fine. I, I, I see it, though. Um, okay, so so yeah, so so when, when, when you castle here, um, yeah, I will I will castle my king. And now you still can trade this this knight, but what do you remember what your original idea was before it's, you, you want to bring uh, out wait, the bishop and the what? king? Sorry, what's that? What do you mean? My original idea before what? So remember what you want to do. Let's go back to the start. What did you want to do here? Control the center. What do you remember the first move that the move the first move that you played in this position? Uh, I think it was the I put the pawn up. Right. So 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 which one? Like well, that? this did is the it? correct move, but you played you played a different move originally. Do you remember the first move that you uh, the first move that you played? Mm, okay, the so the move, the move that you played was you push this pawn to d5 here, which gave up this pawn for free because white can take the pawn. Yeah. So so th this was a this was a decent this was an idea to try to activate your bishop, but if we go forward, we just follow this line um, e6 knight f3, but 
or not d5 bishop b4 bishop d3 castles castles in this position now this is a good move because now you want to open up this middle part of the board because then your bishop is is activated so oh, like if white okay. trades the pawns now your bishop can come out but also you can bring your rook to this open 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 file as well mm -hmm. so so you you had the right idea here of trying to push in the center like push your pawns forward but it's very important to get the king out of the center of the board before you do that so so that's why um like when, when you reach some position like this where you're developing you you want you want to develop your pieces first get your king out of the center before you start pushing everything um everything on in, in the center of the board or getting your piece on the queen side out okay so that that's the that's the, the most important thing i would say now i'm just gonna since you since you want to play the sicilian i feel like i should show you some basics here so um yeah you're using notepad too okay several of the terms i've worked with they've, they've been making notes quite a bit so um so it's, it's a good thing so okay yeah, so it. let's say white moves the bishop out to c4 here white wants to target this pawn so the way that you would stop this again is you would push this pawn up one square yeah and you stop the stop the threats here let's yeah. say white brings this knight out you bring your knight here say white castles and again you can in this this case you probably should um let's just say you should push this pawn up one square because what you want to do is you want to develop your knight and your bishop here right and get your king out of the center of the board okay because it's, it's the most the basic i mean in in all these positions you want to develop your pieces get your king out of the center of the board and then try to play around with everything that's on like your bishop and your rook here on on this queen side of the board okay so if you were to bring this knight out right away the problem is white can push this pawn and your knight is getting attacked yeah so your knight is a little bit uncomfortable so so first you push this pawn up to stop the pawn push let's say white uh moves the knight out now you bring this knight out let's just say white pushes a pawn you, you trade the pawns you bring a bishop up and your next move is going to be to castle your uh to castle castle your king out of the center of the board here would a uh, pawn to uh, e5 not be good by white by no by me uh well the reason that you don't you, you really don't want to do that in general is because this bishop on the square is eyeing your pawn right. next to your king okay so so what you really want to do here is, is actually a very basic plan you want to get your king out of the center let me just make a couple of normal normal looking moves um uh you get the king out of the center board and now you would say move your bishop up here I'll just play some some moves and now you bring the rook to this open line where it, where it's targeting mm -hmm. or it's keeping an eye on the knight and the pawn down towards uh c2 and c3 and and at this point what you want to do is next move you want to push your pawn to a6 push the pawn uh on b5 up to b4 and try to remove this knight from c3 so that your rook has a lot of uh a lot of targets on this line yeah are you kind of following that does it make some I, sense I, yeah 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 <laughs> no I'm, I'm not expecting i'm not expecting you to say uh, to, to like understand it by heart of course not because I'm, I'm going a little little bit fast with this so mm -hmm. um no, so I, I i understand the the idea of it of course right so i i think this is the important thing is if your opponent tries to bring the bishop out you push pawn also secondarily if white ever pushes this pawn in the center um always you pay. always capture it. you do not give white the opportunity to push it up one square like always yeah. capture this pawn so okay so let's say white moves this knight on the second move and and since since I, i'm having you push this pawn i'm going to actually recommend you do it again so 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 push the pawn up okay and now normally white again wants to take the center with the pawn push so when you capture the pawn white captures you should move this knight up here by the way I think uh if, if I assume force is not going to watch this this might be a really nasty idea against him because I have a feeling he might play this um so you bring this knight out and you attack this pawn right you're attacking the pawn on e4 yeah okay let's say white pushes this pawn up uh-huh now 
remember your knights under attack and you don't really want to move the knight so there's a really nice little tactical idea here so if you take like a second to look at the position and see if there's anything that that you can um that you can find to win this pawn on this dark square i see that i can hold on yes i think i know this yeah exactly yeah and you attack both the pawn and the king and when i when i block you just capture and you just win a pawn for free mm -hmm. so white can't do that so here white has to find a way to defend the pawn so normally white would bring this knight out here and now following the theme from the previous setup we looked at what would your next move be um this exactly yeah and and so and so now you're threatening the pawn again so let's say white moves this pawn up here now I, I have a there's a really tricky idea here um that that you can play which is you can trade this bishop for this this knight and now you can move this queen up here ah i like it so now you actually attack both pawns at the same time but it, he's gonna take for sure though right right so if he takes then you can take this pawn yeah and you'll see you're hitting you're hitting the king and you're hitting the rook ah, and if white blocks with the bishop then you capture the knight and if white moves the queen then you capture the rook that is nasty so what you end up with is you end up with kind of this weird like you end up with all these these sort of double attacks um wooden shield almost yeah almost yeah almost yeah yeah it's not it's yeah i uh, yeah so so this is this is one idea that you can do normally what, what would probably happen is your opponents are going to move the bishop out here um and and now what you want to do is you want to push this pawn forward in the center because white's not white's not developed this knight yet so even though you can move the bishop out pushing this pawn in the center is very good because you're going to open up you're going to open up uh squares basically for your king but also for your bishop coming out as well what, what do you mean okay so so if white takes you take with the pawn and you can uh, bring okay. the bishop out you see the bishop okay, is, yeah. is is has a line and let's say white castles you move this bishop and then you castle your king next move and you can bring the bishop out and again it whoops and, and again you can bring the rook to uh to e8 afterwards sorry yeah, uh rook I'm... to e8 sorry that's, that's a little little bit random okay let's say you castle let me just make some moves to show you you can bring this rook over one square and again you're going to be able to move your bishop at some point and your rook is not going to be on this open line uh-huh so so that, that's why this this is probably what i'm going to recommend as a system is just to uh it, if white pushes a pawn what's your move take right I'll, always take the pawn remember that always capture this pawn uh yeah. if white pushes the pawn you always want to capture it um so so like yeah so on knight f3 you push the pawn let's say white plays a move like g3 here to uh to develop the bishop this way this this fianchetto i think people are calling it like the turret or the sniper or something now um you can see my arrows right yep okay you can't okay good um so let's say white does this the, the way that you would counter this is bring this knight out because again you're trying to trying to guard the central square where white wants to put the two pawns next to each other why not pawn to d5 um this is actually completely fine i was going to play it one move later so if you want to play it right away this is also completely fine what i was going to say is bring okay. the knight and then push the pawn but it's basically okay. the same it's more or less the same thing um and if white captures which way do you capture the pawn uh wait um i what i do with my queen no R remember what you want to do is you want to open up uh, open up stuff for your bishop here so you would actually capture with the pawn again so that the bishop right, can, right, right, can, right, right, can right. be developed of course um so so you you would take with the uh you take with the bishop or take with the pawn rather um right, right right so so that's like what i would say is is the most important thing if you're gonna play a sicilian is remember that you want to push this pawn bring this knight out and if, if white ever puts a knight here you can you can bring this bishop down to b4 so like so like let's say we do this if if white plays this move what's your next move this is sort of like doing a review um <laughs> I'm thinking about no it's not that 
the bishop was for move for when he moved out his knight, I think. Right. Correct. So Is it this? Yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah, it is. That's that's correct. 100% correct. If white has not moved the knight out here, white has like a bishop and a knight, you want to push this pawn and take the center space right away. Yeah. But if white brings the knight out, what's your move? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, so if white puts the knight on this square, then you bring the bishop out. Um, if, if white, let, let me think what, what other setups and if white brings the bishop out, what's your move? Uh, 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 I don't remember this. Well, remember, just think about it. And it's not like specifically memorization. Just think about the concepts. Right. Let me, I no, I think I know. Yeah. Yeah. This. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And then I'll bring the knight out. And remember, nothing has happened in this middle part of the board. So which, which piece do you bring out here? Um, is it this? Mm hmm. Exactly. Right. And so, so I'll push the pawn. Right. Remember, you always, if, if white pushes that pawn in front of the queen, you always want to capture it with the pawn. Yeah. And now just thinking back to what we did before, how do you want to finish the development? remember re remember the basic thing that you generally want to do is develop your pieces like like above and beyond like you can push the pawns in the center but okay um probably i probably want to um maybe this wait yeah yes no yes Oh yeah, sorry, it didn't it didn't show up on, on my board. Yeah, knight f6. Knight yeah. to f6. Yeah, yeah. This is this is exactly. And now when I bring the knight out, exactly. Yeah, and now you attack both the pawn and you attack the knight. So so th this is exactly basically the point behind telling you how to play this opening setup is that it's more or less the same idea almost no matter what your opponent does. Like you want, you want to push this pawn, you want these pawns here and you want to develop both your knights. And then you decide, uh, when to put your Bishop here or when to push the pawn in the center. So, so again, let's say this, um, you push this pawn, of course, if white pushes the pawn, you capture and what's your next move. Uh <laughs> God. It's the uh, same. It's 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 the same 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 thing every every. It's like one of like two plans. So so when you when you think about it, you want to develop the knight and bring the bishop out, right? And then get your king out of the center of the board. This is one basic idea. Yeah. The other the other the other idea is at some point you want to bring this knight out as well. Yeah. Yeah, I was holding on to that one, but right, we talked about you want to develop the the left side first. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the side next to your king. Right, so I will bring bring this knight out. Right, exactly. So, and if I move this bishop, and I don't bring the knight out here, if I don't bring the knight so that your bishop can't attack it, what was the move here? How do you strike right away? Exactly. Yeah. No, this, this is, this is perfect. So, th so it's actually not that hard. You just have to remember against which setup of the white pieces to do which idea. So, yeah. so when you think about this one, the knight hasn't moved. So therefore you don't really want to move the bishop because it doesn't accomplish anything. Right. And if, if white pushes this pawn, take. right. And, and if I take, right. Nine, and, two, three, six. Mm -hmm. So I bring the queen back. Um, was it, was it this? Right. Or I move a pawn. I can't so remember. I move the knight. 
the same idea as before? No, no, sorry. That was once I was supposed to go to C6 or E6. Right? Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll just move it to E6, right? There, there's some kind of weird server lag from, from time to time. Um, okay, right. And so I'll move the knight out. Well, you do want to play this, but 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 I guess the reason let, let me try to explain this in simpler terms why you played it um in this uh in this other line. Let, let me let me go back. So in sorry, so 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 in this line the reason that you push the pawn here in the center is because white has put three pieces on this line. So white can't really um if he pushes pawn and white white captures, you can actually even take with the queen here. And you attack both the, the pawn and the knight potentially. Okay. So white's put a bunch of pieces on this, this, okay. this D line. So, so, so therefore it's okay to push this pawn. But when we go back to the other line, which I think was, um, which one was it? What was, was this? Whoops. Sorry. Was, uh, was this one white has not put, there's only the queen. There are only the two Queens on this line. White hasn't put any other pieces on this line. Mm -hmm. So um... what was the other idea here? When you think about the, the, the development of white, yeah, exactly. It's bishop b4, attacking the knight, and then you'll castle your king next move if if white protects the pawn. If white doesn't protect the pawn, then you just cap. Yep. Okay. <laughs> I think I got it. Okay, so now, now, I, now I want to see you play, play a couple of games. It all makes sense. It's just the, there's a lot of ideas at the same time, so... Much right, I think the way to look at it, though, is what, what I'm trying to show is that the ideas tend to be very, very similar. There isn't much yes. much of a difference. It's generally the same same concept. You want to develop your knight, develop your bishop, and get your king out of the center, or win the pawn in the center. Mm -hmm. um, and then secondarily, if white pushes the pawn, uh, in, in, since you're playing the Sicilian defense, if white pushes his pawn with the queen here, always capture. Do not give white the opportunity to take the pawn or push the pawn forward. Mm-hmm um so so yeah wh why don't you play play like two or three games and i'll i'll, I'll give some commentary and, and try to help you out okay like act actual games yeah yeah the, and the reason right. i want to look as black is because i saw a little bit of what you did with uh with botez and it looked like your white opening was very solid okay nice um i'll do 10 plus 5 for this people are trying to people are trying to or I could do an unrated game with some random. If I play with like uh, with Botas, she would she um adjusted time and stuff. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Let me. I, I'm not sure if I can actually do that, but I'll I'll uh yeah. Okay. I'll play this guy. Let me see. Oh. Oh. Was I supposed to play as? Wait. How do I? Can I force the color? No, no, it's okay. Just play this game. You're, you're going to have to play with both colors, so it's completely fine. I, I want to see your white opening, but the reason I... Yeah, just just play your, your white white opening strategy. The reason I didn't look at white right away was because I what I saw when you were doing it with Botez, it looked like you had a very solid white opening. Okay. And then as black, I'm not as certain about what to do when... Um, okay, interesting. I don't really see this happen a lot. Yeah, it's it's kind of a free pawn. Um, okay. Yeah, this is very good so far. Oh, I think this guy is sniping. Actually, I think this I think this guy's a yeah, new, new player. Is, like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that was a mistake. Well, we'll see how it goes. What he, what he did is a very bad move. Um, you, you're not going to see why it's a bad move, but I'll... Um... Uh, okay, this is such a confusing start, so I'm, I'm a bit thrown Right, off. so so this is what I expect you play. Normally, this would be a good move, but it's going to run into... Um, it's going to run into some problems. Rut row. I see the problem now. <laughs> That's no fun.
What am I supposed to do here, huh? Um, it's gone, gone badly really quickly. Um, <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, I, I don't know what to do here. I feel like I can't get out of this. Yeah, you're, you're actually already completely lost in this game. Okay. Let's play one against the guy who's not going to yeah. try some cheesy tech. Well, I, I I will show you what the response is so this doesn't happen okay. again. Oops. Oops. Or, oh, that's okay. I you might... start, you're like simling two games? Okay. What did I do? It's fine. You started a second game, so I just resign this one this one against Thuck. What happens if it auto-aborts? Uh, no, no, uh, Nothing happens. Okay, I can do that then. Okay. Rage quit. I, I gave up. I for, I forget to uh, I forget to click um, surrender or whatever. Yeah, re resignation, surrender, kind of the same thing. All right. What are you, what am I doing? Okay, so I've just resigned in this one. Or did you start the other one? No, I haven't started anything now. Okay, so yeah, I've just resigned. Cause you're down. You're down a queen here. So. There's just nothing that can be done. Yeah, but I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not in that game anymore. I don't see it. Oh, you're not? Oh. Or I don't know how to find it. Click on the game, the, the lightning bolt. Oh no, you're, you, I don't know, I don't know what happened. Somehow you closed the board, so that's oh, yeah, fine. Okay, just, okay, just okay, ignore yeah. that. Um, okay, but I, uh, one second, let, let me. All right, I'm watching the game now. He offered to draw. Nice. Okay, so all right, so so I'm gonna just show you quickly. That, that was uh, that was that was rather unfortunate. It's not, yeah. It's not, some of those things they throw me off completely. I don't know if someone's gonna attempt that in the tournament. Well, I'll I'll, sh I'll show you how to reply because it's pretty straightforward. Okay, so your opponent played this gambit against you, pushed the pawn, so you capture it. Um, and then your opponent brought this knight out. You develop your knight. Guard this extra pawn that you've won in the opening. Your opponent plays queen here. And this is where, um, this is one of these openings where you just have to give this pawn up. So what you would do here is bring your knight out. Black would capture this pawn. And now you'd move this knight up here to attack the black queen and attack this pawn next to, uh, or the pawn that's in front of this bishop. Hmm. And so now your opponent captures and the only way for well actually let, let's start let's do an exercise let's say black moves the queen here mm -hmm. do you have a good move um Maybe this bishop? Yeah, and, and this is this is actually winning because the knight guards the bishop, but when I move the queen, what's your next move? Uh, here. Right, exactly. And then once I move the king, rook. Exactly, and you're you're just winning the game. You have one extra rook, and you're you're way ahead. And the black king is in the center of the board. Okay. Yeah. So in this situation, this is one of these ones where you don't don't worry about this pawn. And actually, I was also all Forsen might play this as well, uh, he, or not quite this exact game, but but Forsen likes to move the knight here. What's your next move? Hmm. Is it too early to bring out the bishop? Probably is right. Do I just uh... there there are many there are I many think... moves that are fine here. I, pray, I probably bring out one of my knights. Okay, which one? Um, this one. Okay, and already, yeah, the gambit the force wants to play, he can't play. So that that's fine. Okay, <laughs> it's completely irrelevant. I just wanted to make sure. Um, 
Okay, so so let's uh, get back. Why, why, was that the right choice, and why is it the right choice? If it is? Uh, it's completely fine. It stops a certain gambit that that Forsen likes to play, so it's it's actually a um, it's it's a good move. But let's say I play a normal move, like I push the pawn. What would your next move be? Um, maybe bring up the knight. Okay, yeah, completely fine. This is this. And you want to try to take the center right away by pushing the pawn. So okay, so my next move, you mean or, mean or? Yeah, if you like, in most of these positions, if you can get two pawns in the center where you're not going to lose any pawns, like these pawns in front of the queen and the king on these two central squares, that generally is going to give you a big advantage in the game because you have a lot of space with the two pawns uh, next to each other. That's just a general rule in chess. Like, I'll just make a random move like knight here. Generally, if you get these two pawns next to each other in front of the king and the queen, and you're not losing the pawns or they're not being attacked, it's generally yeah. very, very good because it means you have much more space than your opponent. Yeah. So, so yeah. So, this is completely fine. So, let, let's get back to this game quickly. So, e5 takes knight c6, knight f3, queen e7. So, the correct move here in this case is to not worry about the pawn and to bring the knight out here. Yeah. Black captures. What's your next move again? Right, exactly. So now I capture. You, you have to capture. I'll go back. I don't bring the queen forward. And now you just push this pawn in the center and you just try to develop your bishops. Um, very simple plan here. You want to bring the bishop here, queen here, and castle your king out of the center of the board towards the, the towards the black queen on this line. Okay. So okay, so go ahead and start another game then. Cause that was just a bad, that was just a, a, a gambit. So it was a bad game. Yeah, it was some, someone challenged me. And so he probably looked up like top ways to trick your opponent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or maybe just, maybe he was an expert and he just knew how to mess with me. All right. It looks like I get to, oh, I get to do this. Okay, here I we go. I don't practice much with if they do D4 first, cause most people seem not to. Yeah, most, most players, exactly very good most players at lower levels tend to play e4 pushing the pawn in front of the king much more than in front of the queen so okay so this is good all right I'm trying to remember what i want to do next now mm -hmm. push maybe pawn well the queen six. has to move somewhere here yeah all right so this is what we looked at Okay. Oh, I wanted him to walk forward. Still fine. R remember, remember the plan. Yeah. So it's got to be, it's got to be rook to e6, right? Or a pawn. Yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Perfect. So this is kind of what I'm saying. It's a very basic idea, but it's it's okay. And now here you have to move your knight. So 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 which square makes the most sense? Mm, D five. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is wow. This is picture perfect. That confused him. It's because it's it's probably because it's the, it's the best move. Your, your opponent has some real problems with the position that he has now. Okay, this is where my prep work ends. Now I have to actually play the game. Um. Okay. Well, how do you feel about castling right now? It's a move, but. I, it's definitely reasonable to finish development, but I think also, even if you want to castle, you should also be aware of where your opponent's pieces are and, and what you can attack or not not attack. Like, that that should always be first. Like, you want to develop a castle, but you should always be looking to see if there are any of your opponent's pieces that, that, can, be, that can be captured. 
Uh, are you hinting at? Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> so, 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 yeah. I mean, the thing is, you always want to have a plan where you want to develop in castle, but always be mindful or be aware of where the opponent's pieces are and whether whether there's stuff that yeah. you can capture. I tunnel vision sometimes, or I like, yeah, I get stuck on. Yeah. My no, no, I, I understand. I, I forget to react to what they're doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sometimes Kappa. Shut up, chat. <laughs> mm -hmm. I feel like I have no ch choice but to move him. Maybe I go here. He's gonna, ah, uh, he can capture um, G7. That's no fun. But if I go here. Wow. Wow. Impressive stuff, huh? Yeah, it's actually very impressive that you saw that. Because what you did is you, uh, you guarded everything. Uh... If I bing bang boom now, I get a free pawn, I think. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not even, it's just a bing, but I don't know if he's planning something cheeky. Hey, one thing I would I would also say is when you look at your opponent's pieces, see if there are any pieces that are near, like near your side of the board, like near your king or near these pieces. If there aren't really pieces that are closed or coming down the board towards your king, then generally it's going to be very hard to attack from a distance unless your opponent has like something lined up with like a bishop and a queen. And here white still has not developed his pieces um like the rook the knight and the bishop so generally when when the pieces are not really developed in the game it's it's uh you shouldn't be that worried so you, you can take stuff for free Have you made any official prediction you think is gonna win the whole thing? Or maybe you don't wanna be biased like that? Um well just let, let's focus on the game for one second. I I, I will answer that, but I, I don't wanna do it on your on your move. Okay, that's fine. Um Okay, hold on. So I see what he's cooking here, I think, maybe. Well, I see that G6 is kind of hot. Well, I don't know if he's cooking anything, but but I guess it's fine. Well, no, it's not fine. Hold on. Well, yeah, it is fine, I guess. I want a castle right now. It's completely fine. Yeah. Okay. So, so right. So in terms of the tournament, what I would say is I, I think I, I know who the favorites are in each bracket. Um, like the, I think the top four players are pretty clear. There's like, there's going to be Hutch. There's going to be Boy Boy. There's going to be Force and, and, um, and box box in, in the other group those are probably top four guys uh I, I in terms of who else will qualify and be contenders uh you're, you're playing really well right now so i'm actually I, i'm not sure i think you might be a, you might be a contender possibly Ooh, to get the I'm second sure. spot in your group um so here i'm thinking so obviously i need to probably move the bishop right so um, i'm going to tell you the next move you should actually take this knight um yeah with your bishop because I, I, I'm not sure if you're aware of this, this concept. So you're going to see your opponent has two pawns in front of the king. Whenever white has pawns like this, where there are two pawns that aren't supported by anything near the king, it's very dangerous because it leaves your king uh, wide open to attacks. So if you have the chance where your opponent ends up with the stacked pawns, like right near the king and there's nothing that can protect them, it's very, very dangerous and the king can come under attack very, very quickly. Okay. I, um, oh yeah, so, I, I feel like my queen and my bishop is kind of trapped, and that makes my, also my rook trapped. I, at this point, I kind of just want to finally move that pawn on d7, is that yeah. good? There, again, you should look at your pieces, which ones have you not brought into the game? Oh, that's funny, you said b, didn't you? No. <laughs> I thought you said B. You said D? Okay, I, I heard B. But anyway, Oops. yeah, you played you played a great move. That's why I was confused. Um, but <laughs> okay. Okay, I take with uh knight probably. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> fused. I do manage to confuse basically every coach I've managed to confuse <laughs> at some point. All right, did you you did you get any chance to look at? Hold on, I gotta play more. Okay, um, bishop. Yeah, you you're you're playing this game. There's there's really not much I can say because everything you're doing is following the basics, and you're really you're developing your pieces. You're you're ahead. This wait. Okay, I have potentially a cheeky move here, or I don't, I'm not sh Queen to f6. Hmm? There really are, there really are no bad moves here. You're, you're attacking all the pieces. Uh, I guess the real question is how do you want to finish your development in the next couple of moves? I want to, I want to get that, uh, rook out. I want to put him on the C file. Mm-hmm. Yeah, very, very good. Because also you don't mind trading the, the the queens or the rooks because you're ahead right now. You have this extra bishop on the board. So when your opponent has less and less pieces, you're 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 doing very well. Also, why is your rating so low? Um I haven't really played uh <laughs> I, don't, okay. I don't know. Yeah, your your actually... your rating is like way too low. You're playing much better than 7 732. Um I had a, I haven't actually played that much as if for on this website for a while or like on okay. this format or whatever. And okay. I um had a few games in a row where I only really practiced openers and I had these really really fast games. Ah, okay. Opener, okay, right. And okay, I'd that makes up sense. Something yeah. and I just immediately like mm -hmm. give up. Um What's he trying to do here? So, say if you wanted to take my queen now, am I correct in taking it, uh, taking his with the h7 pawn correct so you you almost always if you're going to get two pawns like stacked in front of each other you want to capture towards the center of the board not towards the edge of the board starting to get a bit concerned about what he's cooking Kind of out of. Okay, never mind. I have an idea. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Am I playing? I'm playing with. This is not ten plus five, I think. This is ten, ten straight. But you still have three minutes. Yeah. He's trying to scare me. Oh no! Never mind. He's threatening my bishop. Okay. It's not fun. that bad no that was that was completely fine there, there really aren't many unless you blunder your rook or your bishop here there aren't really many bad moves in the position in general because your, your king is very solid everything is very your, your king is very well protected here and your opponent only has a queen and a rook so it's very hard to attack um with, with su such limited material on the board yeah
Someone's saying Maiden too. Is that true? No, that's not. I ignore chat. They're more often than not. I think it's more confusing when you yeah, start. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Sometimes they sound so confident. <laughs> Um, okay. I mean, I see what he's trying to do here. So he wants to go down with the queen. Right, okay. Um. So the main Chat. thing you should the main thing to focus here is worry about your king, just that your opponent can't use the two two pieces he has left, the rook and the queen, to attack your king. Yeah. Um okay. <laughs> yes. Nils taught me an expression called Luft, I think. Luft, mm -hmm. Luft. Yeah. Oh, also my chat really, really wanted you to... I'll just do this now so we have it out of the way. My chat really wanted me to teach you... I should have taken the pawn. Teach anyway, me. Something called... What was it? Bong rip? Rip bong? Cloud rip? <laughs> <laughs> it's called a bong cloud. Yeah, I can, I can show you what it is. Um, it's not recommended to be played, but sure. <laughs> okay. Oh, I should have taken the pawn. My bad. I'm not really thinking now. I guess I guess I could still lose on time somehow if I really. Yeah, up. I think that's the real. That's the only danger that's left is that you'll you'll lose the game. You you'll run out of time. I almost every time I have to just clean everything up. Mhm. Mm because otherwise, uh, I find a way to either stalemate or lose. <laughs> oh, okay, this guy's just. Yeah, this is just over. Why isn't he giving up? Uh, one thing is, a lot of people at lower levels they don't they don't give up because they're hoping for a uh, they're hoping for a stalemate where you where they're where it's a draw because their king can't move. Right. Okay, so forgive my dankness here, but I just I'm cleaning out the pawns so I can easily more easily. Play. Right, no, that's actually that's what you should do. Just I, I think the main you, you know the checkmating pattern I think already. So so yeah, if you clean if you make sure that that your opponent only has one king and then you know the though the yeah you know the pattern yeah. 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 Oh shit! No. Okay. <laughs> no. It it shouldn't matter still. Um. <laughs> okay, I'll get a new pawn. Or I'll get a new... I can't believe I just did that. Oh my god. No, you can't have my pawns. This is Operation Nimrod. What's he doing now? With one one king, there's not much that he can can do. I'm making it a I'm making it a rook again because this guy's like getting redemption for the other rook. Okay, finally. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you, you, you made me a little nervous there for a second. You, um, <laughs> with, with oh which you my played. god, I forgot that he was the he was the rook and not the queen. I pre-moved because I was so confident. Right. So everything you did in that game was actually was 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 great. There was really nothing that I could say that was bad about that game. Nice. That that was literally perfect. So you want to do one more? Yeah. Um. I'm wondering if I should do 10 or 10 plus 5. 10 plus 5, I'm high rated, high run. Probably, I, I would say, yeah, I would say do 10 plus 5. Okay. 
But then, yeah, I'm not sure I know if I'm black and they open D4. I'm not sure. Okay. I know the answer. Sure. So I'll I'll show you something briefly after this game then. Cool. Would I want to move E4? Yeah, that would have been a better move because it, it follows the theme that I mentioned before of getting the two pawns in the center on those squares next to each other with the king and the queen. So that would have been a better move, but this is still yeah. okay. I've actually had more practice with Queen's Gambit accepted than rejected because almost all every time they accept. Yeah, I, I mean, both both are playable, but I think you'll see this a lot. I think pe many people in tournament will be playing this this Queen's Gambit opening. my queen to b3 that's getting ahead of myself is it maybe i just want to move a knight yeah i would say normally you don't want to bring the queen out early you want to get your king out of the the middle of the board first yeah and and once you do that then then you start to worry about the other pieces coming into the game yeah it's so like your, your next move that you want to play is you want to move that bishop the only know. question is which square do you want to go to your your bishop on c4 F1. Yeah, you can do that. Like, also, yeah. um, um, also, prob probably normally when you set up these pawns and these these dark squares, this uh, pawn next to your king and then in front and then the pawn in front of the queen, you actually yeah. want to put the bishop behind those pawns, angling towards the black king. It's so, okay. Uh, towards the black king. Anyway, your your opponent is trying to attack you, so you should be be careful here. Um, Ooh. am I is he like setting up a trap? You made me nervous by saying that. No, no, no. It's, it's it's just be aware of what he's where that basically by pushing this pawn he attacks your pawn in the center that doesn't mean that there oh. it's it's real dangerous but just be mindful of that mainly okay yeah, yeah i'm so scared i'm gonna fall into like one of those games that ends in like five moves like <laughs> that first game well that was just a gam that was just a gambit when gambits happen yeah, you can I'm end nervous. Up in trouble like slickery practice is one of those and then well i already told you how to uh refute it so <laughs> yeah but isn't there like a million of those not not really not against the pawn push that you're you're playing it, when you push the pawn in front of the king it's much more there are many more tricks like that but when you push the pawn in front of the queen there really are only two gambits um that your opponent can try and you already refuted the one not refuted but you don't play the one that uh that allows forsen's gambit and the other one i, I just showed you the solution to so there aren't there aren't really many gambits all right, um, I'm looking at either A3 or castling right now. Mm -hmm. if, I feel Both like moves if I are three, playable. He probably takes, huh? Both moves are completely fine. Okay, I'll start with this. And if he takes, uh, never mind. Forsen's Gambit. Mm -hmm. What's it actually called? It's called the Budapest Gambit. Is what it's what it's uh, the official name. Budapest Gambit. <laughs> mm. 
trick me. Okay. Yeah, you, you protect the pawn. That's fine. Only fine? It's Well, it, the, the, I guess it's hard because usually there are many moves that are okay. So... There's, there usually don't, don't think of it in the way that you probably have like three options that are all about the same for the most part, unless there's some tactical sequence, but normally there are like three moves that are re, that are completely fine. So I don't, I don't have like a personal preference. All the moves, all like queen c1 is fine. Queen c2 is fine. They're, they're both about, they're both about the same. Okay. And don't worry, by the way, I've said this, I saw this to other streamers where I'm like, it's fine. And they, they've actually said kind of the same thing. They're like, they're, they're like, when I say fine, they're like, wait, so, something's wrong. Like it's, it's, it's not yeah. the right move. So <laughs> I'm, I'm used to it. Okay, let me see. Um, why did he do that? He did that not to attack uh, B4 and, and D4, surely. Is he? Maybe he's just cleaning out. Bring all the boys to the party that Nils taught me. You have about. a really not. Yeah, so, so you want to bring... There's a really good move here I'll show it to you after the game. But yeah, you, you, you've you got your king out of the center of the board. You developed your bishop, your knight, your queen. These pieces are not on their original squares. So what you really would like to do is bring the rooks into the game here. Mm -hmm. So th again, you need the rooks on like kind of open lines. So there, there are two open lines that you can put the rooks on that would be really ideal here. I mean, I want the B, the B and D probably. Right, exactly. But the guy on A can't really move because queen takes. No, wait, never mind. My queen is protecting, I just realized. Um, I'll do that. Wait, did Niels really say that? Bring all the boys to the party? He said something like that, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, no, it was a good sesh. You, uh, you should uh, check it out. It was a really funny game towards the end. Um the game where they said i managed to confuse him as well because um i had no time and i have to kept on moving i was winning but i had to keep on moving and checking him and stuff ah uh, yeah yeah okay so now he's being cheeky about it now he's being annoying Sorry, I'm not laughing at you, but chat just broke. Yeah, I just couldn't say they wrote something very funny. What do they say? No, they're, they're, it's just the boys, the boys of the party. That's like everyone's like memeing off of that now. <laughs> this bishop needs to get a life. Is that like a common expression? Yeah, so your bishop is behind these pawns. This is very true. You mean your bishop or his bishop? No, no, his bishop needs to leave. Oh, alone. okay. Well, your bishop need, kind of also needs to get a life because it's not doing anything because there are these pawns that are in front of yeah. it. So it kind of has no no access to any of the diagonals. This is also true. I'm choking in here. No, I meant uh, the bringing the boys to the party. Is that a is that a chess official chess term? No, not I mean, not at all. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, not at all. That's why it's so funny. Uh, I mean, it, it makes break. sense. It's just funny. It's it's funny wording. I'm in trouble. Yeah, this 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 is a dangerous situation. <laughs>
Yeah, I don't know. The only move I'm looking at right now, I'm looking at moving my knight. Yeah, it's it's kind of a tough situation here. Moving your knight is one of the better moves in the position if you move it to the right square. Yeah, it's either e1 or d4. I guess. So think about it this way: your 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 bishop here is really bad with these pawns in front of it. So you would like to activate your bishop somehow. So mm -hmm. if you can move the knight somewhere where you can try, yeah, if you move the knight, if black captures, you can capture with both pawns and you open one of the diagonals for the bishop You're right Now the question is which one I'd rather move, but I think I'd rather move um, this one to make mm -hmm. a nice staircase. Yeah. Yeah, normally this is also correct. You want to generally capture towards the center um, for the most part. Okay, so your queen's under attack here. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I'm just... No? Did I mess up? No, no, this is this is the best move. Yeah, this is definitely the best move. Oh my god. Look at this chat. You guys are <laughs> terrible. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually going to ignore my chat. <laughs> Bishop b4. Yeah, so so if, if Azure moving your queen was, wasn't under attack, moving the bishop would have been very good. You would have attacked yeah. the queen the rook, but you couldn't do it. I want to move. I want to push uh, the H two pawn whenever I get a chance. Right, and get the luft exactly. Yeah, this is a very important thing. Getting the luft so your king can can move, so you you have the space. Yeah. All right. Um. I mean, I. I guess I do it now. All right, my next plan, rook to b3. Mm -hmm. Try to get that guy out. And if he goes, if he somehow goes to c2, I don't think he will. I can capture. Right, right. He will that, probably that, go to good. c4. Right, and then what, what you want to do is um, if you look at your opponent's pawns, you can try to capture these these pawns. The pawns aren't solid; they don't protect each other. This this pawn on the dark square. Ooh, okay. Yeah, he just messed up, right? Because if I take now, and he takes, he loses. He loses. Unless he's mm -hmm. winding me up for something. I think he just realized. Yeah, that was a very bad move by your opponent because now, now you you won the the, the extra pawn that he had. Oh, I have to pee again. <laughs> okay. All right. I don't know. I, I'm unclear why I'm letting you know, but there you go. <laughs> yeah, well, all right. So, so here you kind of need to uh, try to uh, it, use your other rook because because your rook on this this line with the bishop is fine, but your other rook is kind of not doing anything here. 
on a line with the pick. Oh, right, right, yeah. Um, well, I would go, yeah. So this was the plan I was talking about before. Mm -hmm. But he's gonna go to C four, right? Sure. And then, I'm not really sure what to do after that. Um. When do you decide that you want to start pushing the pawns in front of the king? Um, normally when you're towards towards the end of the game, like here. But there is one thing that you can do is you can you can actually take advantage of an open line in the next couple of moves if you play this correctly. I'll, I'll show you how to do that because it is pretty random here. Do I just want to stand C three now? Well, if you look at your rook and your bishop on this A line, they aren't really. They, they don't really do anything. It looks nice, but they aren't controlling it. So so what you should play here is you should move your rook over to try to take the open line. But I'm, he's threatening to take my... So I'll tell you the, what you should play here is you should play rook a3. So just, just play rook a3. Um, okay. With the, the rook on the light the, square. The b3 one, right? Yeah, because it's under attack. Yeah. <laughs> So, so basically, the point, point that I'm going to show you is that you line up the rooks on this file and you take you take the line because you can move the bishop oh. next move and you, your rook becomes very active because it can go it has complete control of this line. Uh huh. So this one thing you want to do is if you look at the position, you see where the pieces are. Okay. Anyway, sure move. Okay, um, let's see if I got this right. Oh. <laughs> Bam. Yeah, that that so so the point the point I was gonna make was was in general. Um, well, this one actually, I'll, I'll we can look at this this a little bit. Um, Wait, hold on, I gotta do. Yeah, that's fine. My actually, I do too. Break. So yeah, I'll be right back. Oh yeah, cool. Chat, you guys talk amongst yourselves for a bit. That was such a good game. I gotta take a victory peek. All right, chat. Um, you guys are killing with some of your comments. Uh, just too, too, too hilarious. <laughs> uh, there was a comment that someone said, you show them the wooden saw blade or something, which I, I don't know why, but I thought that was very funny. Um, I don't know exactly why, but someone said, said show them the wooden saw blade instead of the wooden shield. And okay. Hello? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, cool. All right. Um, okay, so I invite you to this board. Okay. I think I did at least. Yeah, you did. Okay, so, right. So just a couple critical points in this game. So first thing is, as I said before, uh, on this third move, if you ever have the chance to get these pawns in the center like this, where they support each other, they're right next to each yeah. other, and then you can bring the knights out like this, it's almost universally good. There are exceptions like once or twice, but probably like 90% plus it's it's very good for you if you can get these pawns and bring these knights behind um but behind behind the pawns they just guard guard the central pawn so if you get this set up with the two pawns in the center it's very very good okay so that yeah, was just I, I remember right after I did my move I remember thinking oh I should have done that instead mm -hmm. right so okay everything else was pretty pretty normal um this was all good push and actually i was gonna say in this position you moved your queen over to this square what you should have done is if you're going to develop the queen you should have moved it up here because what it does is it still allows your rook to move along this this last uh this last yeah. row and also you kind of put some ideas of like moving the knight and targeting this pawn here at the very edge of the board down near the black king uh-huh 
Whereas when you put the queen here, it blocks your rook. Your rook can no longer come to any of these squares in the center. And the queen yeah. doesn't doesn't attack anything. So normally you want to move the queen up uh, to a square like C2 so that you can create attacking ideas and you can actually create squares for your rooks. Mm -hmm. So so that would have been the second thing. Um, everything else was, was pretty good. Th actually, this was a critical moment. So in this position, you move the rook over. There was actually a very good move here that you could have played. Um, so do you know what discoveries are? uh-huh so can you find a discovery um yeah pushing the pawn to c4 right and this is this is a very very good move because you attack the queen but yeah. when the queen moves black's gonna lose one of these pawns yeah so if black goes here you capture this one if black goes here you capture this one right Whereas when you look at this position, your bishop is the only piece that kind of, it doesn't have any access. It's like stuck behind these two pawns. So mm -hmm. what you want to do is try to activate the bishop somehow so there's more space. And what this does is you win a pawn, but also your bishop has all kinds of ideas on the various diagonals to attack from. Mm -hmm. So this would have been better. Um, okay, we keep going. Again, you could have pushed this pawn here to activate the bishop. You played this captured you played here right and so this was the other thing i was going to point out so in this position in th this specific position taking with this pawn was actually a bad move um okay but only because your opponent could have pushed these pawns and now he gets uh these what you what we call connected pass pawns so a pass pawn is where the there are no pawns and the pawn can just keep going down the board towards the towards the end of the board to make a queen and mm -hmm. you can't really stop the pawns so black ends up with two pawns, which are connected because they're right next to each other, and they sort of escort each other all the way down. Okay. But in general, this is correct, capturing towards the center, because you want this sort of, uh, uh, I forget what you called it, but... Staircase. Staircase, yeah. You, 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 want, you want a staircase. In general, this is how you want your pawns. You want okay. the staircase, as opposed to something like this where you, you kind of have pawns, but you don't, you, they aren't really in the same kind of formation where they all protect each other. Yeah. So normally this is correct. So your opponent okay. moves the rook, you move the queen. Actually, what I was gonna point out since someone mentioned this in your chat, I think was that let's just say black makes a move like this. Here you can actually go bishop to b4 because you hit the queen, but you also hit the rook. So you're gonna win, mm. you're gonna win a rook or a queen for one bishop, which is very good for you. Mm-hmm. So, okay, rook c8, queen a1, g8, you played here. Right, and your opponent blunder with this move, so you capture, which is good. Opponent plays here. Now, this is one of these weird things where because you have these bishops which are on uh, opposite colors, like his bishop is on the light squares and your bishop's on the dark squares, what this, yeah. what this kind of does is it leads to these positions where whoever can get the active rook, their rook is much better because... Your your bishop your bishop uh, can kind of attack more easily, and I know that makes no sense, but I'll, I'll show you in a second. So when you go here and you go here, you end up controlling this line, right? Mm -hmm. But your opponent would really like to have his rook on an open line too. But the only open line that your opponent can possibly get it on is the C line. Mm -hmm. But the bishop blocks it, so you see the the bishop has to move in order to have any access, and you can also yeah. kind of prevent this by putting your bishop here. Say so black moves the rook, and you put your bishop here. So you end up controlling this whole line, but your opponent doesn't have this line because your bishop sort of cuts the whole whole idea off. Mm -hmm. So so in this sort of position, it's very very good for you to have this open line. So what I'm going to show you, let's say your opponent plays a move like this, you move your bishop back to take the line, trade the rooks, and the reason that this is so good for you is because your next couple of moves are going to be this move. So let me just make some random moves. So you go here. So you okay. cut cut everything off of this line. Is, do you see what I'm saying? You, you cut you cut everything off of this this whole line where black can't move anything. And sure. so I'll keep making well, another move. Now, how do you yeah. attack this pawn? Actually, here's a question. How do you attack this pawn here? Me? Yes. Because you, you can't, if, if you take with the rook, I obviously just capture your rook. Yeah. So in order to attack, you need to use your forces together. Yeah. So how do you attack this pawn? Uh, 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 uh. I got to get my, probably my bishop involved, I suppose. 
Right, so how'd you do that? I don't know, there's so much stuff in the way. When I need to use, like, I'd need to use two moves. Right, so you can't do it in one move? Yeah, okay. I'm trying to, all of his, okay. Right, so, so how would you try to attack this pawn? I guess I go here. Oh, I didn't see and the move. Then, did, did you make a move? Yeah, I made a move. Right, so yeah, One, bishop d6 is the correct move because now you can bring your bishop to this square in the center, uh, this dark square where you, you, you attack this pawn. And you'll see that like the white bishop, or not the white bishop, sorry, the, the black bishop here, it doesn't yeah. attack any of your things because everything is, is basically on, on dark, dark square, so the bishop can't attack any of your pieces. Yeah. And so that's why here... As long as you have the active act activity, like you've got this rook that's very, very, uh, very aggressive, just attacking towards Black's king, whereas Black's rook is doing nothing. Um, this is this is really, really good. So that's why when you took when you, let me give you let me let me go back and I'll give you an ex a, a different example here. So let me go back and say you had traded. I'll I'll find some way to get the same position. Just ignore all the moves I'm making, basically. Uh, so we reach. So for example, I've, I've set up this position, okay? So it's a completely random position, but this is a position you could have had if you had captured with the other pawn and you hadn't put the pawns in the center where you had the, the, the staircase. Yep. So now let's compare this one to the other one. What is the big difference between this position and the, the well, I'll, I'll, so there's this position. I'll show you the other one. The other one. Um, okay, so there's this position mm -hmm. and there's this position. So the only difference is the pawn. It's on this square versus this square in the center. Mm -hmm. And that's, I guess, better because it can help prevent the pawn on the B lane file. Right. Know. But there is, but this is actually significantly, you're, you're still doing well, but this is much different. And do you see what the big difference is here though for, for black? Oh yeah, you can just move his uh, rook down now. Right, so black has complete complete control of this open 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 lane. Yeah. So so for that reason, it's completely fine for black. Whereas in the other one, if we go back to the game, you'll see that right here, it's the exact opposite. The rook looks like it's good, but it doesn't have any 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 access because the pawns just guard each other, and your rook is still very active. So this rook is passive here, whereas in the other one, it has that whole open line. Um, and that well, really makes a big difference. How did we get to the difference. other situation? Because I thought it was the one where I captured, which one I captured with, but it's not, right? What's that? You're comparing two different scenarios now, but I can't, how do I, what led up to the other scenario? Right, so no, the point I was going to make though, is that, well, well the, scenario, the scenario that I mentioned with um, where, you, where you capture with this one, it can't really yeah. happen normally, but I'm just giving you an example of why uh, you, you'd much rather take this way generally and oh, have okay, the okay. pawns connected like this to have the staircase. Okay, yep. And why it was a correct decision, why it's most most of the time it's the correct decision, is is because uh, if if you were to take with this one, just from a general standpoint, your opponent can take this take this file. Okay, yeah. So it, it's it's more about it's more about the general, uh, the general generally what I'm trying to convey as opposed to saying like this is 100% the right move versus not the right move. It's just most of the time you don't you don't want to allow your opponent to get an open lane like this. Mm -hmm. So that's why you should take him with the pawn. Um, Okay, so I guess let's let's just take one quick look at a couple couple other things. So you were asking me what the bond cloud opening is, I think. Yeah, that and also um, a black opening, right, against d4. Yes, against d4. Okay, so the bond cloud opening is when you push the pawn here. Your opponent, let's just say your opponent pushes this pawn, or actually even this pawn, and they go king up. Um, what? Yeah, so so it's it's basically uh, it's it's kind of like a meme. It's it's a joke opening uh that you'd only play if you're high essentially so oh. it, it's just it's just basically a joke it's not a real opening um but it's 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 something that that a lot of chess people basically meme about okay <laughs> best okay. opener five head right <laughs> best opener yeah okay so and then the um, other question you asked is how to open if they push the pawn in the center right so i guess you can, yeah. you can flip the board if you click that cogwheel there should be a rotation symbol 
that cogwheel to like in, in the board yeah and the yeah, third third it. third actually you can just third one below the yeah rotation right so okay so if your opponent pushes the pawn to d4 again uh what did i say about pawns in the center um like if it's white's no. move what is white's next move here he wants to go e4 probably right so white wants to get these two pawns in the center of the board if he can so the way the way you would stop this i i think you've been your opponents have been pushing the pawn so i'm going to give you something a little bit more uh more more modern which is to bring your knight out mm. so you stop this pawn push so most of the time your opponents are going to push the pawn here with c4 and now you yeah. can play pawn to e6 and if your opponent brings the knight out what's your next move similar actually to the sicilian defense we looked at ah wait so so immediately i wanted to go d5 but are you hinting at me going pushing out my bishop instead mm-hmm so this right so so also again when white moves the knight out if it's white's move what is white's next move here let's just say you play a random move what would white's next move be um would he continue pushing the pawn or would he well he would push this yeah he'd push the pawn in front of the king and again he gets the two pawns here he is three right, but right. It, he gets these two pawns in front of the king and the queen on these central squares and as i said before almost universally this is going to be very good for you if you can get the two pawns like this so therefore you bring the bishop out and if white pushes this pawn here what's your next move this exactly yeah yeah perfect and of course white can't capture because the king's in check so here normally what will happen is your opponent will play something like queen to c2 trying to play it push this pawn here and now the way you stop it is you push this pawn forward okay and and you stop this pawn push and if white let's just say white brings a knight out you castle your king um and let's say white moves the pawn again you would push this pawn forward okay so I, th I think that should be pretty it should should be good enough to get you at least to to the middle of the game when when mm -hmm. when you should get a position and get to see the, the tactical possibilities yeah great mm -hmm. so uh, do you have <laughs> any other questions um no i don't think so okay not that i can think of right now well, yeah if you come with any just 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 let me know and yeah we can we can take a look at more stuff hopefully hopefully you make it into the bracket i think it's i, I think slicker is going to be your biggest challenge probably um okay in terms of competing for second prize but or se second place rather in, in the uh, in the competition but it's going to be should be fun and and you clearly you clearly understand quite a bit of these ideas like discoveries and just the development so as long as you can get out of this opening stage and you get to play in the middle of the game i think you have uh, you have good chances yeah I, two of my biggest issues right now is one is that sometimes i it's been you know i've been going you've <laughs> been going somewhat hard in kind of a condensed amount of time so sometimes mm -hmm. the different ideas and concepts i I'm, i get them confused or mixed up right i would say i, I what i would say is problems. generally since, since you're pretty new to the game i would say if you want to look at it do it like for an hour and then come back for an hour later don't try to do like two or three hours in a row because you're not going to retain the information in a way that's yeah. useful so i would say like you do like one hour when you're feeling tired or it's just you're not seeing it then you stop take a break and come back to it later and um and yeah. then, then go from there yeah for sure great all right well i i hope you enjoyed that i i, I think I, I tried to give you some some basics so you can you can get to the middle part of the game because that's really what you want you just don't want to get cheesed at the start but like forcing or something uh -huh. that'd be just i mean that would be highly unpleasant i think so so yeah yeah hope, no, hope it something. was very useful I, th I think my uh opening uh as black definitely i think i'm gonna i'm gonna be re-watching the vod a couple times to make sure but uh, right, it makes right. a lot I of sense the the things you're saying about how you know if they're stacked in a in a lane right so actually i'll give you them. i'll give you i'll give you an example of that okay let me let me just make some some uh let me think of something i can do here okay actually let, let me go back and put some pieces on some random squares not not that just ignore this opening it doesn't actually matter but i'll i'll, I'll give you a specific example um let's just say you go here okay so this is 
this is just an example uh because you had this in one of your games before if your opponent ends up with a king here where you have these pawns that are stacked like right next to it like in this yeah. case this is almost always very dangerous because it leaves the king very vulnerable to being attacked like you can move your queen up to attack the pawn you can also try to move your knight here at some point with like a bishop and it's just these pawns when you have these pawns next to the king where they're unprotected like this they're split you see the pawns don't connect this is very very bad your king is very open in such a case wait could you could you play out an example one time sure okay so okay i'll move the knight say um white moves a bishop you move a bishop here actually let, let, let me not hang some some material here let's just say something like this okay let's say bishop here you move this bishop up let's say white trades the bishops you take king comes over and now you move this knight in because you're trying to checkmate the king mm. right okay and another example let's just say white goes like this now you can go uh bishop here so white goes queen here and now you bring your queen all the way down and you try to checkmate like this okay yep so this is just a general thing if your opponent ends up with these pawns that are stacked like specifically um specifically like like in this uh in this example where your your king is open like this it's very very good for you if your opponent ends up with pawns like this and and also you you really don't want this to happen either okay so cool all right so ho hope you awesome. hope you learned quite a bit from this and i'm looking forward to seeing you uh do well in in uh in pog champs i think i think yeah <laughs> i think you're one you of the better players from what tomorrow, right what's that i think my first game's on saturday but it starts tomorrow right right and you play against slicker right yeah i'm up against Slicker. for we did practice games was it yesterday or two days ago i think we played three games and i actually won all of them so I'm oh wow confident. okay but, okay yeah yeah but the only thing is i don't think i handled pressure very well <laughs> so yeah i, I think I'm one gonna... thing that's going to be important especially and I, I i've said this about to some of the other people as well is just to make sure you don't get too low on the clock like even if you don't play perfect yep. moves just don't get too low because if you get down to like if you if you get down to like one one minute or something it's going to be very very hard to uh to to uh to play good moves and that then the pressure is going to really build because because I, I assume you're you're not used to have being under such time constraints and and so that that's the one yeah. one bit of advice is, is try not to get too low on time until you're sort of very far along in the game if, you, if you're like move 30 or you're down in some kind of long end game with queens and rooks then it's then of course you should be low on time because you're thinking a lot but at the start I think it's more important just to try and, and and not get too low on the clock. Would you would you say it makes the most sense to only practice ten plus five games? Because I I had this idea that if I play ten plus zero games, I'd um, maybe learn to play faster. But maybe I'll just end up teaching myself. To it play it depends. I think you should do a mix. I would say do a couple of games of ten plus zero, mainly ten plus five. Because if you do too too many of ten plus zero, it's going to be the same thing as when you're trying to review the vod or or, or openings is at mm -hmm. some point you're going to play a couple of games you'll probably lose like two or three and then you'll be just like mentally exhausted and then you'll just start losing for no no reason so i think just yeah. maybe a couple of games but probably a mix like two and two or three and three but i i wouldn't i wouldn't really recommend doing um all of 10 10 zero or all of 10 five i think it's just try not to get too low on the clock so it's so a mix okay i have a random question by the way just mm -hmm. looking at you do all of this do you play often against yourself uh, not really because it, it it wouldn't it wouldn't really serve a purpose because I it would be like I'm just choosing randomly what I uh, what I what I like or don't like it just I'll, I'll play like I'll understand what the other person is thinking so there's no like I'll understand what I want to do with white and black so it doesn't make it doesn't serve a purpose okay <laughs> whereas like to, right, so, cool. so like one last thing so like if I play against somebody yep. else um I don't know what they're necessarily going to do at a given moment but like for myself at the very start even when I play the first couple of moves there are many different setups I can do but if I know what the if I know what I'm thinking for the other side it's just like I'm going to make the the reaction based on what I think the other person does so therefore um th th therefore it's just like it, it it will be a draw because I psychologically know what I'm thinking for both sides what do you say chess is mostly just you make the optimal moves and then you just chill until the other person messes up um you try to make the best moves yeah you, you you try to make you try to make the best moves um and you do hope your opponent will make blunders and certainly in this event specifically 
it's going to come down to who makes the last blunder. So even if you make blunders in games, remember that the, your opponents are almost certainly also going to make mistakes, and, and it's whoever makes the last mistake is probably going to lose the game. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Great. All Ooh, right. What have I done? <laughs> yeah, and just t take your time when you go back and review this, and I'm, I'm sh it, it, it'll make more sense. It will. Yeah, yeah. No, everything you said makes sense for sure. For sure, I have to, I have to go back and reiterate and like practice. But uh, yeah, no, it made a lot of sense, and I, I think it helps thinking about it less, um, trying to memorize moves, and thinking about it more like, well, what am I? What's my end goal here, and what am I trying to? Achieve? Right. Well, it's like even the opening against d4, it was very similar to that Sicilian defense, where you want to bring the knight and then bring that bishop on the diagonal. So it's like a yeah. very common kind of theme. And that, that's much more important than the memorization. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, I'm, I think uh, I'm going to go play some chess I, now. So <laughs> just going to mm -hmm. chill. I, ho I hope you learned quite a bit from that, though. And, um, and I'm did. looking I forward to your games. And dro drop me a line if you need anything more, OK? Definitely. Thank great. you. Great. All right. Have a great rest of your stream. You too. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye.